thanks to all the other participants, thanks to the Workers' Party for organising this. Um, I'm going to pick a little area which, uh, taking advantage of the historical context that Jay gave for us and the political context that George has outlined, and just to talk about two things. One is the the situation of the war on Yemen within the wider war on the region, that is to say, the New Middle East, what was called the New Middle East um, project outlined by uh, the regime of George W. Bush, and then also the role of Israel in this war, because those things are not always readily apparent. I think generally with the, the New Middle East project, which was announced in Tel Aviv by Condoleezza Rice in 2006, just before the Israeli invasion of Lebanon. It was made clear in terms of, in the North American terms of bringing freedom and democracy to the region and so on. And we know that General Wesley Clark um, leaked that uh, notion in the early part of this century that there was going to be the toppling of seven governments in five years that there was this wide scale project in the region and the dirty war on Yemen is part of that, part of all of those wars, those seven, or if you include Bahrain, eight wars in the last two decades. I don't think we can understand any of them without looking at as a, as a whole. And uh, Jay has pointed out um, that the, the prize of Yemen is very much a strategic zone in the region. That is to say the, the controlling of the Straits into the Red Sea, we know that Israel and the UAE separately and together are based in Eritrea, uh, looking across the straits at uh, Hodeidah, the big port in, in Yemen there. And the blockade on Yemen is part of this project to get control of those straits and strategically control the commerce there. It has implications for all the other countries. Just recently, for example, uh, a, a half dozen tankers sent from Iran to Syria some of them were harassed and held up in the Red Sea, but they got through eventually. So the strategic control of those straits is one of the important reasons why Yemen is uh, this fought after prize. And of course, also the fact that the two major collaborators of the US in this region, Israel and Saudi Arabia, are very keen to get rid of any independent political will in the region at all, let alone on the borders of Saudi Arabia, where Yemen is a very bad example for democracy in the region for, for the Saudi regime. I won't go over what Jay said about the, the labeling of the, of the Yemeni government as Houthis trying to make a moral equivalence between them and the Saudis, that it's one family versus another family. There is indeed a coalition in Yemen and it represents a very large majority of the population, despite the fact that it's being eaten away at, at different edges. But this new, this new Middle East war is part of an attempt to get control of the entire region um, at the expense of the potential competitors. This is the way Washington looks at it, that the influence of other big powers, um, China and Russia, but also Iran, which is the big independent power in the region, it's seen as a strategic competitor and all of the other pretexts, the nuclear deal and so on, are trying to leverage that project, basically. Now, the role of Israel, which may not be obvious to people, uh, and sometimes people wonder and have said a lot of strange things about why is it that the Ansarallah movement has death to Israel in its coat of arms uh, when Israel does not appear to be directly involved. In fact, Israel is directly involved in a covert way in this war. When the Ansarallah led coalition came to power six years ago in Sana'a, they found Israeli weapons there that the previous regime had indeed been involved with um, Israel, that Israel was covertly dealing with the Saudis and the Emiratis in particular at that time with that project. And fairly recently, um, about a year and a half ago, there was um, the, the government in Sana'a announced that they feared an Israeli attack for the same reasons that the Israelis keep attacking Syria. Whenever the proxy armies, in the case of Yemen, the mercenary groups and the Al-Qaeda groups, particularly in South Yemen, were facing defeat, the Israelis would intervene with missile strikes to try and give them, breathe new life into the destabilization. And of course, Israel is, as a an agent of the big power of the US, is very much involved in this attempt to try and smash up any Arab regime, to fragment it, to break it into a million pieces. I think Jay pointed out that the Hadi regime was talking about six different pieces. But of course, it's the same thing they've been doing in Iraq, trying to balkanize Iraq, trying to balkanize Syria, trying to reduce it down to ethnic tribes and 
uh, you know, protectorates that are run by different, by either Mr. Erdogan or Israel in the South and so on. So there's that same strategy. They don't want a strong independent political will in Yemen. Now, Israel, through its normalization process, which the Trump administration initiated, first of all, with the Emirates and Bahrain, has become more of an open collaborator with the Emirates, for example, and that poses problems for Yemen because Israel may become directly involved. The, uh, the, the government in Sana'a said they will retaliate directly if Israel becomes involved. We know they have the capacity because they've been carrying out strikes on, on Saudi refineries, for example, which are a long way from, from Yemen. Um, the, the, the specter of more direct uh, Israel involvement in Yemen is a very real one and has been enhanced by this so-called normalization project. Just finally on that, I might just add that the final um, devastating malicious act of trying to designate the Ansarullah movement as a terrorist group has aggravated the economic war that's at the root of this broader regional war, basically. That is to say, you, you know, you have comprehensive sanctions against Syria, against large parts of Lebanon and Iraq, against Iran, a blockade on Yemen, a blockade on Palestine. You have this economic war going on and the designation of the effective government of Yemen as a terrorist group is something that simply chills the possibility of any humanitarian aid or commerce there. It means that any of those um, NGOs or trading groups are now facing the real possibility their members might be arrested and jailed by the by the US regime, which we know is acting against journalists like Julian Assange and others. Uh, it's a real uh, chilling effect on the, the possibility of bringing any relief to the Yemeni people. And it forms a package, in my view, with the sanctions, which we know now, thankfully, because we have UN rapporteurs who are talking about the uh, the criminality of the sanction regimes, or uh, really they should be called unilateral coercive measures, that is to say they're economic siege measures, uh, and it's been condemned in against as against Cuba, as against Venezuela, as against Syria. A similar thing with Yemen there, that we should be drawing attention to the the contribution to the genocide against the Yemeni people of this recent designation um, by in the dying days of the Trump regime. It was said in amongst analysts in Washington to be something to do with trying to um, give a reward to the Saudis in, in the middle of a failing war there, basically, a, a sop to the, the Saudis and trying to encourage them into this normalization process. It's very unclear whether the Biden administration is going to do anything to change this, but I think we shouldn't let people forget that this designation of Ansarala as a terrorist group is another blow against the Yemeni people, another um, terrible part of this genocidal war against the Yemeni people. So thanks once again, Jyoti and your comrades for organizing this seminar.